Okay, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIG meeting. Uh, we have the agenda link uh, in the chat or in Gitter if you're following along there. Um, so I'll share that in a minute. Uh, but just hello to our attendees. I'm just going to record you in the doc. Yeah, we'll press the, the document link in the chat. Sorry, I didn't catch that, Oleg. Yeah, I'll uh, paste the link to the meeting notes in the chat. Oh, perfect, thank you. Okay, um, so we'll just start by reviewing actions from last meeting. Um, and both of these we have uh, pending with Alyssa and Skylar, who can't make this meeting due to time zones. So I'm going to copy those and punt them over to the next meeting, which is uh, West Coast US friendly. Yeah, I, uh, you're not screen sharing right now, is it intended? I am not, you're correct. Let's do yeah. that. So <laughs> it's not manipulated, just in case. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for the heads up. Okay, so I'll just punt those actions to there and um, I think we had this one as well, which is still pending, which is also going to be kicked down the road. So we shall get to them one day. Okay, uh, so moving on to new agenda items. And the first thing we have up is uh, what do we do with the Jenkins governance meeting? I know we mentioned in the chat, uh, slightly out of scope, but it's worth having a discussion about this with a few of the kind of interested Jenkins folks. So um, I'll let Oleg lead with that one. So Oleg, floor is yours. Yeah, so maybe the question is too broad. Actually, what I wanted to discuss is concerned that the yeah, Jenkins governance meeting and governance process is pretty important uh, for the community health. It's pretty important for attracting new contributors, etc. Because yeah, if uh, they join uh, the project and see that uh, well, actually governance is not working, it's quite bad. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say that currently governance meeting process is not working because yeah, over the past few months, uh, many meetings have been cancelled because today we are no show sure up. I think this governance board is genuinely responsible to run these meetings. Uh, me and Daniel Beck also have technicians to do so, but it basically makes no sense if there are only a few people joining the call, uh, well, the chat. So my overall concern is that probably we need to reconsider the approach because right now the meeting is not working. So yeah, from the special interest group perspective, I would rather suggest that we see what we could do instead and whether we need this meeting at all. And uh, yeah, I wanted to just discuss it here and uh, then uh, come up with a suggestion in the developer mailing list. Okay. So what do you feel are kind of the key things that should happen in the governance meeting? Like what is the main purpose just from your perspective? Yeah, so yeah, usually, uh, yeah, currently a governance meeting has a few main parts. Firstly, is LTS check, status check, so integration of uh, TXs and backporting, coordination of LTS releases. Uh, second part is about uh, whatever decision making, so for example, trademark approvals, uh, budget approvals, and other such thing. And the third part is updates from special interest groups, sub projects, etc. So we had three parts uh, in this meeting. Um, some parts could be obviously done asynchronously, for example, sick reports, updates, so they could be just distributed over the mailing list, it's not a big deal. LTS status check uh, yeah, basically depends on uh, availability of uh, LTS uh, officer. So currently it's Oliver, but yeah, he wasn't also not available for the last couple of meetings. Uh, but yeah, so I think that basically we could do all the things asynchronously except decision making. And mm -hmm. decision making process probably uh, under the CDF umbrella now. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's the plan for governance yeah. board going forward. Yeah, I think um, there is, so there's been 
talk, there is a need um, with the new structure of CDF to have um, a group um, and for typical other Linux foundations, that they call them the technical steering committee, for example. Yeah. And that would be kind of the liaison to the other bodies within CDF and to the developers and to be, you know, both communicating and making the decisions, especially in the, the second one bullet point there. So the trademark and budget approval. So that's something um, I think we, it's worth setting up our almost kind of reapproaching from fresh about, you know, how do we do that? Um, so definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. And maybe can any thoughts from the other folks on the call? Of what's your perspective on it? And what do you think it needs or should do? I, I personally don't have an opinion. I wasn't involved in that. So I can't really say much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our main problem is that all Chinese governance documentation uh, is built around the governance meeting and governance board. Uh, so, yeah, decision making process, uh, we would need uh, to rework uh, many things in Jenkins if you want to do so. I think, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm not sure that trademark approvals or budget approvals are really a part of technical steering committee. Uh, but yeah, it sounds natural, but, uh, yeah. Uh, probably steering committee is a better word rather than just yeah. purely technical. Yeah, maybe I'll just, yes, okay, steering committee. Um, and with something like SIG reports and updates, would those fit well in this group? Like, could we bridge capturing, like, we, I don't see many published summaries of these are the cool things we're doing in each group um, so you, you sort of have to go find the videos or go be part of the group um, but we don't necessarily broadcast or share kind of the activities in a, a summarized highlights way yeah so we used to do it uh, at the governance meetings sometimes uh, but yeah basically nothing prevents us from doing it uh, in the uh, mailing list just say into somewhere to the dev list or to the user list and uh, that's it uh, we did it a couple of times for projects like uh, jet 200 java 11 i mean status reports uh, overall for the projects and yeah, it is probably something we could uh, do again so yeah for this part i'm not really concerned uh, we can uh, really move it uh, out of uh, governance meeting Mm -hmm. uh, just going to say a quick hello to Kara. Thanks for joining us. Uh, got Oleg, Marky, and Rick here. Uh, we are recording the video and we've got minutes in the chat if you want to bring up the document as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I, th I think for this one i don't know what the best way to proceed is but it's something um i think i can take an action to just try to have some conversations with folks and uh just see what the general feeling is in terms of um certainly for the decision making um that's i'm happy to proceed with that lts status check uh not too sure mm -hmm. Well, uh, this is something we can discuss from my LCS release officer. Because, yeah, yeah, for example, now we have a problem because uh, KTF has infrastructure issues. And basically, we cannot uh, release LCS uh, in time. Uh, well, uh, life happens. But, uh, yeah, the problem that uh, we don't have a uh, governance meeting where we can sync up on the status. So we can yeah. use uh, mailing list for that and uh, I sent a bit to the developer mailing list. But how it used to happen is discussion at the governance meeting so that we were able to join uh, and agree with uh, our next steps. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take an action just for the second part just to... Um, just to look into a proposal around kind of a, a steering committee and punt that to the mailing list and see what people think 
It would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, and generally, it would be nice to talk uh, to Jenkins Governance Board to understand what's uh, the vision about uh, board going forward. Because you know, we de facto have only two people, Tyler and KK, on the board. Yeah, so I think that's people. something they they are aware yeah. of and they they're working to solve. So it's just a question yeah. of capturing yeah. where they are with, are with it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to propose uh, any. Uh, last comments starts on that topic otherwise i'm going to propose we move on mm -hmm. okay so next topic is community bridge for jenkins uh which is a follow-up on google sum of code and google season of docs mm -hmm. so oleg do you want to uh tell us what this is all about and what yeah. we think we can do with it okay so if you don't mind i could just uh, share screen for a while because yeah. okay might be easier to just uh, show it. Go ahead. Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah, I need to clean up uh, my desktop. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, community bridge. Um, uh, the story behind it that, uh, yeah, this year we were applying to Google Season of Docs. We were not accepted uh, due to some reasons we were discussing in uh, the Docs. We also had uh, a lot of GSOC project applications, and this year we were unable to accept all of them. Uh, well, we have seven projects, but yeah, uh, we could have had more. And uh, there was a discussion uh, whether we could uh, somehow uh, get uh, these projects uh, running. And uh, yeah, this discussion happened uh, several meetings ago with Tracy, and she made a proposal to actually uh, consider a community bridge portal. So Community Bridge is a new portal created by Linux Foundation in order to just provide uh, a venue where uh, potential mentors, potential mentees can uh, join uh, together, discuss projects, etc. Uh, yeah, the site is here. Um, so yeah, Tracy, yeah, just the site was it was something like JSOC as a service or something like that. Oh yeah. It, pretty uh, much what it is uh, so each uh, project can have uh, an account there and uh, we can basically have uh, project ideas um, on the site so for example i created a stop uh, project idea for jenkins uh, so what, what did you have to do to create that was it did you have to make an application or just go ahead and yeah you had uh, to make an application i had to go through the review process but yeah, it was pretty quick so maybe in 24 hours uh, the application uh, got approved Great. So yeah, I have an account there, some information, yeah, I have one project. Um, yeah, what do we have on this uh, project? Yeah, it's just a stop, uh, basically. So we can have a number of uh, potential mentors, uh, we can have uh, uh, students applying, and each project has a timeline uh, where uh, some mentees apply, and then uh, the application gets reviewed. Um, so what's not displayed here on the dashboard is that uh, yeah, basically there are some uh, tooling in order to um, uh, do um, uh, crowdfunding and other th such things. I haven't explored it uh, in detail, but yeah, but uh, there are some uh, uh, potential on this side. But if I understand correctly, the site is still under active development because yeah, you go to some sections, so they do not seem to be uh, fully complete. But yeah, the site is there, and there is actually a number of projects uh, which have been already posted. So yeah, so this is about mentors. Yeah, there, so yeah, there is a bunch of projects which already have accounts there. So some projects just get a stop, uh, something like, for example, OSS or Cloud Foundry. So like uh, my stuff for Jenkins, we have one project with a number of mentors. And yeah, basically, whomever wants, uh, they just come and uh, make a proposal. Some organizations approach differently. For example, here, uh, Hyperledger, they basically have uh, multiple project ideas. Uh, so they put a uh, project ID or project topic directly to the subject and manage it separately. Uh, so right. Yeah. So in that case, a project is a specific piece of work that someone might work on. 
yeah, right. So yeah, there are buttons like the need or whatever. Yeah, there are also some diversity programs uh, driven by community bridge. So there was announcement that for first 100 mentees, uh, uh, the Linux Foundation will uh, double uh, the uh, uh, donation. Um, uh, and yeah, such other things. But yeah, basically, it's a platform where we can post projects, uh, where we can get uh, some follow-ups, where we can announce uh, terms, etc. And yeah, uh, basically, review applications and get them accepted. And uh, we won't be limited uh, by JSOC timelines, by JSOC limitations, because yeah, JSOC has its own uh, limitations. So for example, on the academia students, etc. Uh, and yeah. We could use it uh, in order to get uh, some projects in the program which we were able to accept. Great. So, can we tell is the time, is there like a fixed time scale when oh. people sync up, or is it completely up to each project to define um, yes, schedule? Complete, uh, completely up to each project, and on the project, I mean uh, rather project ID in GSOC terms. So, for example, we can have 20 uh, projects, each of them has a different timeline. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so here, yeah, this is basically a program setup. So it's uh, for multiple projects, uh, we can contribute as we wish. Here there are three default timelines, but we can have a custom one if you want. Okay, example, so it's a general spring. Yeah, for example, if we decide to do whatever hard fares or whatever, we could do that. Uh, and yeah, then you can uh, add some details, for example, requirements, selection process if you want. Uh, and then yeah, somebody just follows uh, the application and uh, applies to the project and hopefully we get a follow-up. In our case, we have some potential uh, mentees base because yeah, we have dozens of uh, GSOC students who applied. Uh, we have uh, GSOC students. We also have other people who continuously seek for mentorship in the organization. So we could just facilitate uh, it and have a portal where we post such project ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that looks good. So do you have any feeling for what our next steps should be? Well, what I would be interested to, we have um, two projects uh, which we could consider. One is about uh, documentation or maybe a couple of mm -hmm. projects of documentation uh, from our Google Season of Docs because we have mentor teams, we have project ideas, so we could just uh, post them and we also we have uh, partic uh, interested contributors who could be mentors. And uh, we also have similar discussion in Platform Special Interest Group for one unaccepted project. Yeah, it's uh, in the agenda, by the way. Uh, so there is an application uh, which we wanted to discuss um, and uh, yeah, there is a student who is interested to continue. So we could also use... Uh, Sorry, what uh, is the proposal? So or the what pro is the summary of the project? Yeah, so just a second, yeah, I'll show it. Um, so yeah, there is a list of JSON project ideas this year. It was quite long and yeah, this is um, a project for improving Windows services with YAML configurations. So we uh, got a decent application there. Uh, basically, the only reason why we were unable to accept that uh, is number of slots and mentor capacity. Uh, and yeah, uh, if we have an opportunity to run a program outside the JSOC timeframe, uh, we could do that. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So do but would we have mentors for that, or is that something we'd have to recruit? Uh, we would. Uh, that's the thing because uh, thanks to JSOC and JSOC, we already have established teams. Yeah. And uh, we could uh, use uh, this base in order to run the program. Yeah, uh, there are some open questions about that. Uh, for example, uh, regarding payments. Uh, so, community mm -hmm. reach doesn't require you to make payments. Uh, so, but yeah, some uh, programs do so. So, it's a topic which could be discussed. And yeah, also, I think if you're so, having internships, they should be yeah. paid. Yeah, right. Uh, for payments, uh, there is uh, one significant issue uh, for that because yeah, if we want to do payments, yeah, we have uh, a Jenkins project budget now. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is an opportunity to crowdfund some projects which uh, uh, could be interesting. But in order to do crowdfunding, uh, there is a strict requirement that projects within 90 days apply to a core infrastructure initiative. So core infrastructure initiative is a program again by Linux Foundation about uh, security. Uh, so what uh, it includes, uh, yeah, basically this is a batch program. 
So uh, yeah, it's uh, many open source projects already participate in that. Uh, but yeah, there is a number, there is a pretty long list of requirements uh, which uh, pro open source projects uh, need to comply with in order to be a part of this program. But yeah, firstly, it could give uh, Jenkins project visibility. Then uh, yeah, Linux Foundation is a big thing uh, since we are part of CDF. It might be interesting for us to participate as a Jenkins project. But yeah, it needs a lot of discussions with uh, Jenkins security team because uh, yeah, even though Jenkins has established security process, obviously we need to ensure that we actually uh, comply with all the requirements there. Just a okay. Yeah. So if I just slow slow that down. So if I hear you correctly, um, mm -hmm. so with Community Bridge we could crowdsource funding for each project. Yes. Um, however, there's a potential blocking requirement where within 90 days we would have to be compliant to this core infrastructure initiative which has a focus on security and so we'd have to meet a bunch of security requirements yeah, is right. that correct so, yeah right uh, core infrastructure is mostly about uh, security but yeah well it may be beneficial for the project it may be definitely yeah. beneficial for linux foundation because a lot of linux foundation projects use jenkins so Great. Uh, it, uh, there is uh, a lot of synergy opportunities there, but yeah, it would require some time investment from security team. Okay. And so what are other options for funding as well? Um, just generally, would that be potentially getting it from other donations, corporate donations or yeah, right. uh, CD? So we uh, can uh, do corporate donation. So I uh, didn't spend much time on this topic, but it doesn't look that uh, there are any restrictions as a part of community bridge. Okay, so uh, if a company wanted to sponsor a project on a specific area, perhaps. Yeah, so maybe they basically uh, there are even uh, pages for that uh, for companies. Uh, so some companies uh, already are present there and uh, they do funding for projects. So oh, for I know, so thanks. Cool. But yeah, I also know the design. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's nice uh, to have them on the list and yeah, obviously yeah. we could uh, uh, get some uh, Jenkins uh, sponsors here as well on the list um, and uh, yeah, it could be done. Okay. Another source of funding for us is just the Jenkins project budget, though I'm not sure what's uh, its state now because I guess we are transitioning from SPA to CDF. In the, with regards to budget, but yeah, we definitely have some uh, money in our coffers, and yeah, we mm -hmm. use money before to fund outreach. So yeah, yeah. Might, might be also possible to do some sponsorship as a part of community bridge. Yeah, and do you have any indication whether we'd be eligible for the matching funding? Uh, the, which one? Uh, uh, you, you mentioned that there was uh, Linux Foundation had a. Mm -hmm. We're going to match for a first number of mentees. Mentors mm. projects. Yeah, so far <laughs> oh, yes, so sounds far. gone a bit strange. Oh no, it's back. So yeah. okay. uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically it's here. Okay. Uh, I landed on the same page. Uh, there was just a blog post about uh, diversity programs. Uh, I'm uh, trying to find the link. Yeah, diversity. Okay, that's fine. We can just just curious if we can look in. Yeah. I can look into that offline. Yeah, the hub is uh, security and don't watch it, uh, etc. So you can start from uh, there, and uh, yeah, there is some information uh, for eligibility, etc. I didn't uh, deep dive into this topic, but yeah. Okay. I understand okay. that it might be important for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up and ask if there's any questions, comments from anyone else on the call about Community Bridge. That's... Yeah, so Mark is not on the call because yeah, I wanted to discuss uh, running a couple of uh, test projects for documentation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that uh, I will uh, take it offline and discuss it tomorrow at the documentation SIG meeting. Yeah, so it seems uh, yeah, really good structure, something we can pursue and certainly to build up for, for kind of a long-term option. Mm -hmm. um, so funding and the core infrastructure initiative seem to be 
kind of the, the next steps of things to investigate and see whether where we can stand with on those so um so this right now you've signed up jenkins to this um bridge project but yeah. are we interested in signing up jenkins x as well it's uh, something we could discuss because yeah for me it's not clear how jenkins x governance is going to work uh, going forward because uh, yeah, originally uh, Jenkins X started as a uh, Jenkins X sub, sub project, and we still listed here. But now uh, in the CDF, uh, there are two equal projects. Uh, so yeah, this uh, probably yeah. need an update. But for example, when we are applying to JSOC this year, or when we are applying to JSOC, we still operate it as a single organization. And uh, I don't see a particular reason why we don't do so, since uh, there is a lot of overlap in the project. But uh, yeah, if Jenkins X community wants to have a separate account, separate project list, it's, yeah, it's also possible. Yeah, and one option may, with that might be um, that we do it, we sort of do it from a CDF level and all the projects in CDF, we invite them to start their own page, but um, treat it as maybe CDF can contribute some funding. So any projects within the CDF are, are open to proposing their own projects if they can find mentors and a right time scale for them. Yeah, right. So yeah, if somebody wants to try it out, uh, just send me your email. So I sent a message to my email and I'll add you as a mentor. Uh, okay. Thank you, organization. So you can uh, play with uh, the application form and yeah, you can yeah. see what you can do with it. Okay. Yeah, no, that looks really good. I think, um, no, I can't think of specific actions, but you know, take a look at the core infrastructure uh, uh, and start thinking about um, what's the best approach for the funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you going to you're going to follow up with Mark on the Docs project? Yeah, all right. Uh, basically, I have permissions there, so yeah, uh, I can do it on my own. And yeah, if you do that, it would be nice to discuss some funding things, but uh, yeah, I think we can do it at the next meeting. Okay. Because yeah, funding would require governance meeting and hence our previous topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other thoughts, questions before I move on to the next topic? Actually, before I move, I see we've got quite a few topics. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Um, so, oh, I'm not sharing it. Also, I don't have that uh, document, and the chat for me is um, empty except for Mark saying he has an outage call. Ah, yes, good old chat history doesn't show up. I'll repost that. Oh, um. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Yes. Chat. I've lost the chat. Uh, if somebody else could post in the chat, I'd appreciate that because I'm lost in tabs. Okay. Um, so I've got a set of the next few agenda items. Uh, just conscious of who's on the call. Um, just before we just dive into them, just in the order they are, this is going to go, what ones do folks care about? Um, so see Rick's here and we've got one from Rick. Um, anybody else want to highlight any one of these to talk about with more priority? Uh, I want to uh, discuss about the local community and uh, how does that go in? Uh, like um, we we talked last um, last meeting, and uh, maybe uh, we have we will have a uh, uh, local website. Uh, but uh, uh, what what's the different? Uh, what's the relationship with the different community uh, with, uh, between? Uh, global community and the sub community. Yeah. Just to understand, you're talking about uh, com local community pages on Jenkins.io, right? Or something else? 
uh, I have uh, another website. I will just send the link. Oh, let me know if you want to share your screen at all. I can hand over. Mm -hmm. No, no. I, uh, I send send a link to the chat. Um, uh, Jenkins dash uh, zh dot cn. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Jenkins the the IO gone. Uh, the IO uh, slash uh, zh is a middle website of Jenkins IO. Uh, I um, the IODM, the uh, uh, ZH website. So I put uh, everything, um, everything related to the sub community. Sorry, Rick, we're losing you. So, uh, can you hear me? Uh, we lost the. I, I didn't hear the last bit of your sentence, but I heard the rest. So, if you don't mind repeating the last uh, couple of lines. Uh, I mean, I will put uh, everything about the local. Uh, set, uh, the because I. Sorry, Rick, it keeps cutting in and out. Is that just me or is it the same for others? Same for me. Okay. Rick, are you still with us? Uh, sorry, my network is not very good. Uh, no problem. Do you, shall we try? Mm -hmm. Try again. So, what is it um, you're proposing, or that you'd like us to do, or we should discuss as a community? Uh, what do you think about the new? I uh, just sent the link. Do you think it's uh, proposed on it's a uh, by the practice? Um, yeah, I think you're, well, for me, um, I think it's kind of breaking new ground. So there's no sort of existing practices or things about how we could do it. Um, I don't know. Does anyone else have thoughts? Okay. I mean, it looks, looks pretty good. And if that's something that like the, the Chinese community is coming together around, um, but maybe this is something again, going back to Oleg's thing about just general governance that might be of interest at that level. But yeah, I think it's worth kind of going forward with it if it's a way to get information to people and redirect folks to, to resources um, okay. and to keep letting us know um, if there's things we can do as a community to make it better or easier. I think you've been working with Olivia on from infrastructure items. Okay. Uh, the last thing uh, I want to discuss about the uh, Jenkins user conference in China. Um, uh, maybe I don't have a, a many contacts with the community. Sorry, contacts with the community? No, doesn't work for me well. Okay. Hey, Rick. Um, we'll pause there. I think you had another topic about uh, an event in China, which we can add to the agenda. So just Just add that there. 
and I don't know, are you around with a question about how to get some more contacts and drum up some people to help organize or attend or sponsor? Okay, we'll wait till you're back. Um, I'll switch this to a different topic. Um, that, oh, that, yeah. Do we, um, what is our process for sending swag out to community groups, like stickers and? Um, go ahead, Oleg. Yeah, just uh, wanted to quickly answer. There are a number of processes. One of processes is, uh, for security volunteers. So it's implied today. Another process is for Jenkins Area Meetups. Uh, so if you open a page on the Jenkins Area Meetup, uh, there are guidelines how to, pay, how to get SWAT. And for some uh, programs like online hackathons, etc., we also send it out. As far as I know, there is no program uh, for just uh, sending stuff to any contributor. Maybe please know something more about um, Yeah, well, one of the things with CDF is that um, similar to how CNCF and Kubernetes project do it, we have the beginnings of a CD store. Um, so they've just set up the infrastructure and uh, I think we're trying to find out how we kind of get swag in there. So actually on that topic, um, if you all don't mind, I'm going to jump to the agenda item about uh, jams and meetups for CDF. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea with this is um, I think when we had one sticker each when it was first set up, uh, Dan Lawrence uh, of the Tecton project, he said he, he tried it out by ordering one sticker, one Tecton sticker, and uh, he said he, he got it there, but I can't remember what he paid in delivery fees, but it was <laughs> sort of a lot more than just the sticker. So, yeah. um, But the idea would be that maybe going forward, we could uh, use that and we could give folks vouchers to go and access the store and order their own um, swag. And then it also kind of takes away from uh, individuals having to get involved with the, the postage and everything. Yeah, so instead of using a uh, sticker mall or maybe a red bulb, uh, yeah, or similar platforms, you create a new one inside CDF. Right? Yeah. And what would folks like to see in terms of, um, is there any particular type of swag at the moment? You're planning for stickers, uh, but potentially kind of common things uh, like t-shirts and socks. So you can let me know if there's preferences you might have um, for those. Any preferences? Like little enamel pens. Okay. Pins, any other preferences? T-shirts, uh, the Jenkins Master, uh, yeah. uh, they are not really produced anymore, but yeah, there is always high demand for them. So I got t-shirts and what was the other one? Yeah, Jenkins Master t-shirts. Okay. And, uh, this Star Wars one, uh, it's a, a top seller. And yeah, maybe, oh, usually it's all uh, people take, but uh, just uh, adding something uh, what we already have. So we have Max with Jenkins. Somewhere we have anti-stress Jenkins, I mean, Tom <laughs> Jenkins. Oh, I call it the stress one, but yeah. Uh, so uh, whatever we already have, we can just uh, put it there. Okay, that's great. Okay, so on the meetup side, um, so just going up to this, uh, if I show you, we've got a initial page that's been a proposal for the meetup. So. Um, have a look at this. So it's pretty similar to what uh, CNCF do for meetups. So it gives an outline of the CDF meetup program, which basically means CDF would manage uh, a meetup pro account. Um, and so then we give people suggestions uh, so they could either start a meetup as a continuous delivery one, or they could keep it as you know a Jenkins, the traditional jam ones or it could be any other project for uh, within CDF. So it could be, you know, um, Spinnaker London or Spinnaker San Francisco. So 
some name suggestions, um, some help for finding speakers, um, and a, a kind of form, some links about sponsors, and some more details um, just about general running an event, and a link to where to store your presentations to make them available afterwards, as well as um, we'll have a link to the swag store. Um, Oh, and a link to Slack. I didn't even know that existed. So I'm afraid to click. Okay. Um, so one of the ideas here is, uh, so there's an existing Jenkins Meetup Pro account, which up to now has been um, run and sponsored by CloudBees. Um, but the idea would be to transition that account over to CDF and then use it to build out all the different meetups. Um, and so we're, on the one hand, is we're just going to try and track down the meetup folks to figure out the logistics of that. Um, and then on the other hand, one of the implications of that will be we discontinue um, the page on Jenkins, which talks about jams. So um, all the things there would be superseded by, by things here. So I don't know if I can find that yeah, page. Maybe not uh, completely duplicating, but definitely updating significantly. Because, yeah, the page itself, it still makes sense to keep it. Yes. Uh, so but, yeah. we'll keep this page, but probably um, redirect things. Um, so, and we can keep the mailing. Would we keep the mailing list? Actually, that's a good question. Why not? Oh, well, basically in Jenkins, we already have uh, at least two emails because then there is Jenkins Jam and there is also a Jenkins Events mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, they are used, uh, so if we could keep them, it would be nice. Especially if um, so, if CDF just takes over Jam as structure, it's fine. But uh, in Jenkins Jam, we actually have people who help uh, to organize meetups, uh, to process that, to deliver swag. So it's not just the transferring the enterprise account; it would require people behind it uh, in CDF to keep the program running. Yes. Yeah, so the expectation would be that the folks at CDF would do this. So there's, um, for instance, at the moment, Elisa, who kind of responds to, to the various things here, and send swag, uh, would not be doing that going forward. So it, they would be getting in touch with folks at the CDF and um, also getting a voucher for swag. So rather than anybody having to send things out, they get a voucher and they can order it themselves. Um, so the and the other thing I think that is a difference that is apparent to me was in the past I think we could set up people could request to start jams uh, and meetups um, just without having actually run a meeting. I think for the CDF one, I think you create your meetup, you run them, and then you you sort of get them added to the group. So the onus is kind of to just go ahead and start your meetup and then get it added rather than kind of asking for things up front um, without necessarily knowing whether people will follow through. Yeah, one thing about that, that if you want to start a meetup on meetup.com, you have to pay, you have to attach your credentials, etc. And I'm not sure it's going to be an option for some of meetup organizers. Yeah. I don't think you have to pay. Um, if you have less than 50 attendees, it's free. Mm. Okay, maybe. Maybe they changed the policy because yeah, last time I was doing it, it was three years ago or so. Uh, and at that time it was uh, required to pay even if you just wanted to create a meetup page. Yeah, when I did one a couple of years back, you could, it was fine until you had more than 50 attendees, uh, which can happen pretty quickly, but certainly yeah. just to get going. Um, um, so any thoughts? So I think with something like that, um, we'll start sending out email to the jam organizers and maybe bring it up in the mailing list to get some feedback. One comment about meetup names. Uh, we have a lot of CICD meetups, uh, for example, uh, meetups in Switzerland, in Zurich, in Berlin, uh, which uh, do uh, events about Jenkins sometimes. Um, and uh, yeah, what if CI/CD meetup was also a pre-approved uh, name so that uh, these meetups could uh, be able to migrate uh, under CDF umbrella? 
well, as long as uh, they have a significant coverage for CDF uh, projects. So, what's the question? Whether uh, so meetups like not continuous delivery meetups, but uh, CI/CD meetups, or continuous integration and delivery meetups, uh, would uh, they be accepted uh, under CDF umbrella? Um, my thinking, this is just personally off off the top yeah. of my head, is that the continuous delivery is uh, a broad umbrella for CI. CD in whichever definition you use um, and that's one thing we, we like people do keep asking us you know does continuous delivery include DevOps does it include CI does it include continuous deployment uh, and so the answer is yes so um, I think the but the continuous delivery focuses kind of on the end user rather than the processes sort of saying okay we need this about getting features out so my quick I haven't really thought about it answer would be mm -hmm. um i think we'd prefer people to label it as continuous delivery to emphasize that focus um but also tag it you know with ci and with cd so that it's clear to people that all these kinds of talk are welcome but um, as i say i probably need to Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, that's uh, why I brought up this topic because uh, some people have strong opinions about continuous integration, continuous <laughs> delivery differences. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's not exactly a new topic. Yeah. Any other thoughts from other folks? What What do you think? Uh, I want to ask if some uh, gem organizer uh, start a, hold a um, meetup uh, does he uh, need uh, to um, how to say how uh, does he need to contact with the community or just uh, hold the uh, meetup uh, privately so would this be for a jenkins jam or like a continuous delivery yeah. the new meetup Jenkins area meetup or CDF? Uh, yes, yeah, so for the Jenkins area meetup, um, this process still applies as we, we're at early stages of transitioning, but um, this, this will still apply. So I think um, yeah, anything that's on here will apply. When people are starting up the meetups at the moment, I think Alyssa is mentioning to them um about the continuous delivery foundation and the option to label it as a continuous delivery meetup if they want to talk about a range of different projects rick is your question simply that is it all right to start a meetup prior to asking permission from this community no i and um, because i saw there are two uh, meetup uh, in China, but I I didn't see any manager from the community. So I, I oh, sorry, I think we've lost you there. Um, but I think yeah, if you are just running events in general, I think you don't really need to do any of this you can just go ahead like just bring communities together um, but then these are just if you want to be kind of part of the jam program take advantage of the um, you know having the bigger meetups um, and have that paid for by the centralized place and uh, get a bit of swag but yeah it's completely optional are you back Rick Okay, um, yeah, let me know if you're there. So just conscious that we've got about five minutes uh, left. Just looking at the other topics, I'll bump that one to next time, but that was a general kind of, um, you know, can we use this group to help get some improved velocity over PRs? Uh, but quick summary is, I think I will apply for 
uh, access to be able to merge things and I saw Rick had recently so I'll follow Rick's example. Uh, Marky had asked for this but I see he had to run uh, he's not there so I'll also bump that one and um, Oleg, do you want to mention this one and uh, tell us what that's about in the last few oh, minutes? Yes. Mm, so it's basically what I was talking about um, before, about a student for uh, Windows Service Wrapper for Jenkins. So um, this student uh, actually wants to contribute to the project and he has a summer internship uh, in his university. So he would be interested to get uh, some confirmations uh, uh, from uh, um, whatever legal entity is, uh, so that uh, this contribution uh, project also is counted as a summer practice. But yeah, in order to do so, yeah, first thing we would need a legal entity, which would have been a showstopper for Jenkins before we joined CDF. But now we are in the Linux Foundation. Uh, so maybe we could have a legal entity, uh, but the, uh, the question is whether CDF or Linux Foundation have a practice for that, whether there are some people uh, who could be a good contact to discuss that, because uh, our, yeah, maybe there are already some such programs for academia and other projects. Okay, so this is mm -hmm. not directly related to GSOC, but it's just a general internship. Yeah, it's not related right? uh, to GSOC because for GSOC, uh, Google does uh, all the paperwork uh, and we participate uh, like, uh, as open source organizations. But uh, yeah, for this, yeah, if we do, com let's say, community bridge, uh, whether we mm -hmm. would be able to do some documentation uh, to provide to the students' university. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are some links to the documentation. Uh, now it's uh, less a priority because yeah, we target a uh, paperless uh, project. I mean, that, uh, we just do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, for going forward, it would be nice to know what are the options in CDF for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's worth noting just on terms of the legal entity side mm -hmm. that the Jenkins transfer is underway. I don't know if folks have seen there's a thread um, in SPI which is talking about um, kind of the transfer from SPI to CDF. And um, there's a resolution that will be voted on the 10th of June. So there have been many conversations um, between COSK and uh, folks from Linux Foundation and folks from SPI. Um, but as you see from some of the issues raised, it's not necessarily going to be straightforward uh, just because of the types of status of organizations and there's a few options and definitely have to get kind of lawyers involved to make sure it all goes well. So I encourage you if you do care to have a look at that. But the long and short of it was that um, once that is sorted, um, we, we kind of officially have the legal entity. I, okay. don't, I think there's some things we can proceed with regardless, but it might just be on a, it will sort of depend uh, yeah, I understand. what you need specifically. Yeah, so basically, even without uh, Jenkins being officially as a part of CDF, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, it might be complicated, but maybe coming into breach is a resolution for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess we still need uh, to wait for the full transition of the project before doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it will, it will be worth it. So <laughs> hang in there. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think the timeline for, for this project, yeah, it's not a problem because we price it in another way. But yeah, if we get another queries, maybe in a couple of months, it would be nice to yeah. know what's take on that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have a better answer at the moment. So yeah, um, many other things um, on the plate. So. No okay. Um, yeah. On that note, uh, just wrap up. So yeah. Thanks everybody for joining in. Do you have any additional comments from anybody? Sorry, slide I noticed uh, unmuting. I didn't know whether you're going to say anything. Okay. Yeah, apply it in the chat. Okay, great. Um, I sorry, I'm just gonna.
it? Still, still lost the chat window. Um, next meeting uh, will be 20th of June, 2019, and it will be at the other time slot. So uh, makes it easier for West Coast folks and East Coast, but maybe not necessarily the rest of the world. Um, but they will probably have a bit more focus on kind of the, the Jenkins world items. But yeah, please go ahead and add your agenda items. Um, and yeah, I'll be, oh, I was going to quickly mention, I started working on this blog post, uh, which is kind of highlighting ways to work on Jenkins projects. So maybe I'll have more of an update then, but all I have now is emojis. Okay. But uh, thanks everybody. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.